Now we're going to do another exercise. Ben, if I replace your newspaper afterwards, can I borrow it? Thanks very much. Now this is another exercise in attention of a slightly more complicated kind because you've got to attend now to something which isn't actually there. I don't ask you to believe, to hypnotize yourselves into believing that this actually is a bird that you, of which you're very fond and which has a broken wing. I only ask you, what would you do if? That's an important element of our work. How would you handle it if it were? I don't want to see a lot of emotion and tenderness and uh, I don't want you to express your feeling at all. I want all that to go into your contact with the bird. You've got to keep it outside there. Anything of you which is left over to express your feeling with is ham. It's precisely that bit which is not engaged in solving the problem. The only way you can dramatize or see what's going on inside somebody is by seeing how they deal with something outside, with their attention. All right? you contact it and see it. You've seen it before. Think about the very first time you saw it and felt affection for it, but place it outside. Fair, but not very vivid. Now, we're going to do a much more difficult exercise in transformation, in imagination. But it's something which you transform which is outside yourself. Now, I am going to wrap this scarf round my head. You know full well whose face will be underneath it. But I want you to make the playful assumption that it may be somebody else's face underneath that scarf. As soon as you can say, however playfully, Yes, yes, yeah, I can see it. I can, yes, I can imagine there could be somebody else underneath that, or something else. You put up your hands. And if you don't see anything, well, don't. Right. Who saw something? Jimmy McGuire, did you see something? I saw a surgeon with um, that white hat and the mask, you know? Yes. And it must have been a surgeon I saw in the movies one time because I've never seen a surgeon in real life. You know? What is his face like, Paul? Um, he was a small, dapper American man. Pull his face. You can describe it, but pull it at the same time. Kind of blue shaven, yeah. with um, horn glasses, and a kind of gentle, benign look, you know? Okay, Joe, what did you see? I see a rather beautiful um, Muslim woman in Kurda, with very large and mysterious eyes. Yeah, what colour hair has she? You, well, you can't see her hair, but it would be very dark brown, I think. Very dark brown? Yes, and rather coffee-coloured skin. Yeah. Sandy skin. How would she comb her hair when she had the bird off? Off? Yeah. It would be straight. Yes. How would she comb it? 
How would you come? Yeah. Very slowly. Chris. Uh, I saw a rather wise little man. Yeah. With a uh, very small eyes, sort of thick around. Yeah. With a very cultured voice. I think schoolmaster probably. Will you count up to ten like he would count up to ten? Uh. Count up to ten for the class in order to show them something, as it were. As that man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you. <laughs> what did you say? I saw an Egyptian god, one of those animal-headed gods. Oh, what sort of animal? It was a, a stand up, gentlemen. It was a bird, um, sort of a head with a, a large black beak and black eyes. Pull the face. A little ears, sort of. Does it speak ever? No, it's a fetish in a, in a temple, in a very black sanctuary. It's very distant, it's very age old. All right, sort of uh, pull its face and do it casting a spell with its hands. Okay. 